Hey folks, welcome back to Grubby's Great Outdoors. We're gonna do something today I haven't done in a long time. I'm not sure why, because it's a fantastic piece of meat. We're doing a chuck roast. We're gonna smoke it on the Weber Kettle Grill, and I'm gonna show you how right now. Okay, folks, here's our setup for today. We've got our drip pan that'll go underneath the, the chuck roast, catch all the drippings. Here's our charcoal basket where our charcoal will be, and we'll actually get this tumbleweed lit. And once it gets lit, we'll put the charcoals on top of that. And once it goes gray over, we'll put a bunch more in there and a couple of chunks of, of post oak. And then we'll go inside and get our roast seasoned up. So we'll go ahead and start this tumbleweed right now. go. Now we'll take our tongs and put some of these on top of it. Not to put it all the way out. Airflow there. So once those get going guys, we'll add a bunch more charcoals on there once they grow over and that's like I said, add some post oak wood to it. But this is how we'll get our start. Now, while these are doing that, we will go inside and season up our chuck roast. Here, right. Okay, guys, so we got our chuck roast out here right now. Six and a half pounds. It'll take, I said, like six or seven hours. We're going to smoke it at 225 to 250. One thing that's really nice about doing a chuck roast is that there's not a lot to trim. <laughs> not like brisket, you got to you know, do a lot of trim work. Here on this chuck roast, there's not much to do. It looks fantastic the way it is. Very pleased with this. I think it'll be a great piece of meat when we're done. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to slice it or pull it. What we'll do, I'd say we'll probably slice it, but uh, we'll, we'll find out when it gets to that tender point. So we'll find out. But I want to actually use a couple different rubs. I want to use, as a base rub, Killer Hogs AP seasoning, just a basic salt, pepper, garlic. I love this little rub. It does a great job. As a top coat, I'm going to use Terry Black Beef Dry Rub. I've never used this. I've had it for probably a couple of years now. Actually, about a year and a half. And I've not used it yet, so I'm going to give it a try. I'll put both of these... Um, in the description down below, a link to them. I don't know if I can get Terry Black's, probably can, but I'll know if you can get AP rub. So I'll put both if they are available. But I'll bring you closer and let you see how we put this on. So like I said, guys, this is gonna be a pretty easy job to get seasoned up. Not much trim work to do. I looked around a little bit. I don't see anything that's really worth trimming. A little gash right there, but I really don't want to take that off. I think it'll be fine the way it is. Um, yeah, it'll be fine. I'll let that stay. Um, little piece of fat there and pull off. But it's, for the most part, not a lot of trim work, if any, um, to do. So I'm real pleased with that, real easy to do. So we'll get our AP rub on first. We'll take mud, there'll be a very light coat of this. I'm not gonna do a whole lot of this. There'll be some salt in the other rub too. So I'm just gonna do a real quick, easy, kind of a flash <laughs> seasoning, if you will. See, not much at all. I know it's a big piece of meat, but I'll put Terry Black's on there, a little bit heavier than this. Of course, I just want this on a surface piece. There's some good fat right there we can get rendered down. I'm not gonna forget the sides, of course. We gotta make sure we get all the sides. Y'all probably heard that before, hadn't you? <laughs> if you watch any barbecue videos, you've heard that a lot from Chud amongst other people, to don't forget the sides. If you like what you see in this video, if you'd like it, and subscribe to my channel, I'd greatly appreciate that. If, uh, Helps me a lot because I've got, I've got some great videos coming up. I've got some companies that asked me to use some of their equipment and stuff like that. I'll use, do, be doing that soon, but it really helps if you subscribe and like the video. It helps a lot. So if you could, I'd appreciate it. Guys, my camera has messed up, so I'm having to use my phone, which is no problem, but it's a little bit different view for me. So bear, bear with me. All right, guys. So our charcoal is getting ready. We'll, um, we'll go ahead and... Let this sit here for a bit and we'll be meet you back out there at the kettle. Hey folks, we're right now waiting for temperature to get up. It's about 95 degrees, just short of 95 right now. Um, once it gets about 205, we will slow and turn the vents close a little bit and kind of come into a landing at about 2, 225 to 250. All right, folks, we got up to the magic 210. I cranked it down a little bit and opened up the lid. Of course, that's where the flames are coming up because it's getting so much oxygen now, but we'll take our chuck roast here and Put it on the fatty side kind of towards the fire for now we may turn it of course a little bit later but 
So for now we'll plump it up a little bit right here where it's at, get it covered back up, and we will go from there. Okay, folks, here's a look at the temperature, the, the temp probes I'm gonna use are by Temp Spike, which is by Thermapro. They do a great job, love these things. This is an actual dual pack. I'm only gonna use one because usually I use two if I'm using a brisket because there's a point in the flat. Here there's just one piece of meat, so I don't have to worry about doing two different parts. But I'll put it here in the center, get it down in the middle of that meat and make sure it reads it good. And we'll, we'll actually use our phone now and can see what the temperature is where we're sitting in the house. So this thing runs great by itself. It's a wonderful little setup. Uh, so we'll we'll check back here in a little while when we get to work. Like I said, we're going to wrap around 160. So we'll, we'll check back shortly around that area. Okay, guys, I thought I'd go ahead and show you my temperatures real quick and let you see how they're, how things are running. Started off today about 3 o'clock, and you'll see at the bottom left-hand corner of the, the orange line there started just above 50. Worked its way up to a little over 200, and then that's when I took the lid off and put it on. So you'll see the up and downs where it dropped down pretty heavily there as we were putting the chuck roast on the kettle. Then it got back up to actually a little over 250, got close to 270 there. And that's when I kind of brought the temp, the dampers down. I got a power and I wanted it to. That was okay though. I just shut it down a little bit, the top and the bottom dampers, and brought it back down to about 240. And that's where it stayed pretty much ever since. Now it's dropped down to 230, so I need to probably check it. And I need to open the vent up or add some more charcoal. It's been around about two hours, but you'll see it's at 233. Uh, just it's at a quick drop here from 241 to 233 very quickly. So we know it's got a got an issue of some sort, so I'll get there and check it. But uh, open it up the vent a little bit or add some more charcoal. So, but let us know where we're at. We're gonna go another couple hours here probably before we get to the, I think it's about 101 degrees, 102 degrees internal. We wanna to get to 160. It'll, it'll start climbing pretty quickly now um, and get to 160 probably within a couple hours. So at that point, we'll wrap it in foil and we'll add some beef broth and wrap it really good and tight in foil and put it back on probably a couple hours to get to that 200 range and we'll check for tenderness. So I'll bring you guys back when I take it off the smoker and uh, put it in foil and wrap it up and show you all that. All right guys, see you in a bit. Okay, folks, we finally hit the stall. The temperature got about 153 and set there for about 20, 30 minutes. And I said, yeah, that's it, we're done. So we brought it in, we've got it right here. Now the stall, I don't know if you know what the stall is or not, but very, very quickly explanation of, of the stall for you. When you're, when you're meat, whether it's a brisket or a chuck roast or whatever, you're a pork butt, whatever you're getting, whatever you're smoking, gets to about 150 to 160, somewhere in that range, it typically will stall out. It can stay at that a certain temperature for hours if you let it go. What that's doing basically is, is the piece of meat is actually basically sweating. And so once that sweat finally evaporates off, the heat of your smoker will then take the temperature on up, but it takes a long time for it to sweat off that, that evaporate off that, that moisture. Much like your body, whenever you're running, which if you still run, uh, anyway, uh, if, you, if you're running and your body sweats, then that is the same principle. You're trying to cool your body off and that's what the meat's trying to do, is trying to cool itself off. So uh, finally, eventually it gets through that but what we can do is we can wrap it in tinfoil very tightly and prevent that moisture from escaping and evaporating and it cooks the rest of the way much faster. So we're gonna wrap it in foil now and I'm actually gonna put some beef stock in there as well. I don't know if you can see that Kitchen Basics beef stock. I just wanna put a little bit in there for moisture uh, and then put a little on it and then around it as well, just down in the foil. But I'm still gonna wrap it very tightly. It's only about a quarter of a cup there. I don't want a whole lot, just a little bit for the bottom. I need to make sure I get this wrapped very, very tightly. And where I've got that fluid in there, I want to try to always bend foil up so that doesn't, so the fluid that we put in doesn't escape. That's what you try to do. Sometimes you get too much foil or really good and tight. Now we'll do this second layer. and bend it upward so it'll prevent that fluid from leaking out and dripping out. Now, here is where I'm gonna use, make a executive decision. Put it in this pan, and then I'm gonna put foil over this pan, then we'll put it in my oven. And here's where I'm gonna put it in the oven, because I can't get any more smoke on this thing with it wrapped in foil. There's no point in me wasting charcoal and energy and time outside when I could put it in my oven and sit in my chair and wait for the, the thermometer to beep and tell me that it's ready to be eaten. So I put the, the probe back in, I put foil over top of this thing, 
Put it in the oven at 275 because I can raise the heat a little bit now. I got it wrapped up. No more smokes can get on it. We'll put it in the oven and finish it off there. I'll see you probably in an hour or so, but for you to be you know, real quick, but for me about an hour and we'll chat and we'll test it and cut it up and take a bite and see how it goes. Be back shortly. Okay guys, here we are. We got the, the chuck roast is completely finished. Let it rest for a good hour. We'll take it out now and look at it and see how we did. Hopefully things went well. Very tender, 207. Well, I pulled it out and took the tenderness and it was very tender. Pull out our temp probe. Oh, wow. There's that spilling area. Let's look at it, see if you can see. And there's a lot of juices in this thing, which is fantastic, of course. Let's see if we just we tear this foil and let it leak down to this tray. That way we don't spill everywhere. That's awesome. Looks great. Feels good. Let's get a good cut here. Let's take it and see if we can see it there. Looks really good. I'm going to cut across the middle here. I'm not sure how the grain goes and how I'll do that. We'll try it. Gosh, it's so tender. Okay. Here we go. What you guys look for, I look. Here we go. We'll see a good smoke ring there. Oh yeah. Oh, it's falling apart. Wow, we. Look at that, guys. That's phenomenal. Look at that smoke ring. Tenderness of it. Juiciness and moisture. Oh my goodness. Looks really, really good. Look at that. Wow, it's dripping everywhere. Okay. Let's just slice off this piece here. See how it does if I cut us a slice. Mm. Yeah, let's give it a try here. Well, that smoke room looks fantastic. Let's see how good this looks. I'll get a taste of it. Mmm. Wow. Man. Mmm. Holy smokes. That is fantastic, guys. Mmm. It's been a long time since I've had one like this. I said before, I don't know why, because it's so good. Chuck roast, you know, it's not like it's a brisket, but I'm tell you what, that is really good. Very tender, very juicy. It's got a great beef flavor. Adding that little bit of that beef stock was really a good idea. I guess it really helped add some good flavor. The juices are fantastic. We'll save some of those. And my goodness, guys, you're gonna need you're gonna need to do one of these. Now I tell you, this is so easy, guys. Y'all can definitely do this. Anybody can do it. Wasn't. Um, You can just, I mean, you can have to use have a Weber kettle. You can do it in a, uh, a square a square grill, any kind of grill you've got, just put your charcoal to the side. You don't have to have a Weber basket. You can do whatever you want. As far as just make sure you have it off indirect like that. Let it cook for low and slow for a real long time. It's finished at 2.07 before I made those of that. 2.07 before I pulled it. It was crazy. It's obviously crazy tender. Very, very good. Guys, I guess that wraps up this video. Sure appreciate you being here. Sure would like it if you'd like and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate the support. So like I always say, I'm not sure where you'll be, but you know where you'll meet me. I'll see you at the smoke. We'll see you guys next time. Take care.